Good day classmates, this is Irish Joy B. Villanueva and I will be reporting about the effect of the train law to our documentary stamp taxes and transfer taxes. So we start off with documentary stamp taxes. Documentary stamp tax on our website www.bir.gov.ph is a tax on documents instruments, loan agreements, and papers evidencing the acceptance, sale, assignment, transfer of an obligation, right, or property incident thereto. That means we need the documents to compute the taxes. We start with section 174, covering the original issue of shares of stocks. Documentation is by articles of incorporation or the subsequent additional issuance of shares of stocks. This also covers stock dividends. It was previously imposed with a tax of 1 peso for every 200 or a fraction thereof now at 2 pesos or still at 200 or every fraction thereof every fraction thereof means that even if the amount beyond the multiples of 200 is, is below 200 it is considered as 200 and tax at the full amount of 2 pesos in the case of section 175 it covers the transfer of those shares of stocks we have the sales agreements to sell memorandum of sales deliveries or transfer of shares or certificates of stocks with power value which is taxed at 75 centavos for every 200 now at 150 per 200 still or a fraction thereof and for those without par value at 25 percent previously of documentary stamp tax paid and original issue now at 50 percent notice at the first two examples that the train law actually increased two times the previous values but the denominators remain the same also notice that in section 174, there is no distinction between with par value and without par value as the rate is still the same for the both of them, which is 2 pesos now at 2 pesos for every 200. Section 176 was skipped by the train law. Section 177 covers certificate of profits or interest in property or accumulation. Previously at 50 centavos for every 200 or fraction thereof, now increased to 1 peso in the train law. Section 178 covers bank checks, drafts, certificates of deposit, not bearing interest, and other instruments, which were taxed at 1 peso and 50 centavos for every piece of check. Now, it is at 3 pesos for every piece of check. Reg regardless of the amount, it is taxed for every piece of check. Section 179 covers all debt instruments which were not covered in sections 174 up to 178 and was taxed at 1 peso for every 200 pesos or a fraction thereof and if the term of the instrument is less than one year, it is also taken at a fraction thereof. However, this is the only provision that was not increased twice, but just 150%. So for one peso, it is one peso and 50 centavos for every 200 of the fair value thereof. Sections 180, 181, and 182 covers bills of exchange and are all subject to 30 centavos per 200 in the NIRC now at 60 centavos for every 200 or value or fraction thereof under the train law. The bills of exchange covered are under section 180, those made within the Philippines in section 181 drawn in the foreign country and payable in the Philippines and in 182 foreign bills of exchange and letters of credit. Section 183 covers life insurance process policies. So based on their amounts, they are taxed differently with a minimum of 10 pesos and a maximum of 100 pesos for over 1 million in value. The only exemption is not over 100,000. Under the train law, the exemption remains at 100,000. The thresholds remain, but the taxes are now at twice the amount, so with a minimum of 20 pesos and a maximum of 200 pesos for those over 1 million. Sections 184 and 185 were skipped in the train law and covered insurances that are non-life. Section 186 covers policies of annuities and pre-need plans. They are subject to taxes of 50 centavos and 20 centavos respectively for every 200 pesos or fraction thereof under the NIRC law. Under the train law, they are now at 1 peso and 40 centavos, still twice the previous amounts. Section 187 was skipped in the train law. Section 188 covers certificates issued. It was previously at 15 pesos per certificate. This covers certified two copies, 10 
certification in our office, certificate authorizing registration, certificates from schools, and etc. They were taxed previous step 15 and were using the sticker, which was also uh, commonly priced at 15 pesos. Now, it is at 30 pesos. Section 189 covers warehouse receipts. If they are above 200, are taxed at 15 pesos for every receipt or 30 pesos under the train law. Warehouse receipts are issued by warehouses when the warehouse owners accept items that are not theirs. So these warehouse receipts does not include warehouses which are leased or owned unless otherwise you are under the business of warehousing and accept items in your warehouse and then you issue warehouse receipts. Section 190 covers high ally, horse races, ticket slotto, and other authorized number games. So this does not include non-authorized number games. They are they were subjected at 10 centavos for every 1 peso or a fraction. Now in the train law, now subject at 20 centavos for every 1 peso. Section 191 are for bills of ladings or receipt. They are subject at 1 peso as long as it is over 100 but not over 1,000 and in excess of 1,000, they are subject to 10 pesos. In the train law, the same thresholds are used but now at twice the amounts of 2 pesos and 20 pesos. Section 192 is for proxies for voting at any election. It is 15 pesos for every proxy vote under the NIRC and now at 30 pesos under the train law. Section 193 covers powers of attorney at 5 pesos for every issued power of attorney under the NIRC and now at 10 pesos under the train law. Uh, still, although it's twice the amount, most of the time we just stick the, the sticker stamps um, dock stamp stickers. You still only need just one sticker, even if it's 10, because most stickers are more than 15 pesos. Section 194 are for leases and other hiring agreements. So it's 3 pesos for the first 2,000 and 1 peso for the succeeding 1,000 after the 2,000. So when there is a contract of lease, executed or um, for warehouses that were leased and a contract of lease is executed there is a dock stamp on that contract of lease if the contract if if the agreement for lease is not yet notarized like in items from the mall when they come to us in our office and there is no notarization we do not compute for the documentary stamp tax since it is not yet due although we can compute but there is no reckoning date so we really need the contracts to be notarized mortgages pledges and deeds of trust for section 195 is subject to 20 pesos for the first 5,000 and 10 pesos for the succeeding 5,000 every 5,000 after the first 5,000 under the NIRC in the train law they are twice the amounts now at 40 and 20 pesos in the train law. When there is a document given to us for computation and there is a mortgage, a chattel mortgage and a promissory note, we will be using the higher value for the computation of documentary stamp tax. If there is a chattel mortgage and a promissory note, since the promissory note is under a higher rate, we will be using that, which is 2 pesos for every 200 pesos peso value or a fraction thereof. Section 196 covers deeds of sales, conveyances of real properties. Now this is the provision wherein the rate is not changed but the coverage. In the NIRC, it only covered deeds of sales and conveyances but not donations. Under the train law, donations are now subject to this documentary stamp tax although still at the same rate and if the donation is exempted under section 101a and b if they are exempted from donation they are also exempted from documentary stamp tax however for purposes of the issuance of the certification which is the ecar or the electronic certificate authorizing registration which will then be used by the rod the exemption of the documentary stamp tax and the donation requires the filing thereof and indicate the word exemption. You have to, um, one has to file it online because there is no more receiving of no payment returns and given to the our section for the processing so that the certification may be issued. So it is exempted, it still needs to be filed. Section 197 
is for charter parties and similar instruments based on the gross tonnage of the ship. Threshold at 1,000 tons, 1,001 to 10,000, and more than 10,000, and computed at. For the first six months, there's a value, and for the each month succeeding the six months or a fraction of that month, they are also subjected to a certain tax. So initially, they, the minimum amount was 500 pesos plus 50 for every month to a maximum of 1,500 plus 150 for every month for those more than 10,000 tons. But in the train law, they are not twice that amount which is up 1,000 plus 100 for the minimum or 1,000 tons and below and a maximum of 3,000 pesos plus 300 for every month after those six months. So that's it for the train law on DST. So moving forward, we have transfer taxes. Of the transfer taxes, what what is a transfer tax? Transfer taxes arises when the title is shifted from one party to another. An example would, when, would be an estate tax because you need to transfer the name in the title, in the register of deeds title from one name to another name. When a person dies, that person's name needs to be transferred to the name of the heirs or when there is donation or when there is sale so there's a transfer tax involved so under the train law we have the rates of estate tax so as you can see in the table we have from five percent to as much as 20 percent rate with the exemption of up to 200 thousand pesos they are computed from the net estate in the train law it is now at a fixed six so how do we compute the net estate since it is still the same to be computed as 6% from the net estate and that is covered by section 86 under the allowable deductions from the gross estate. Under letter A, for the citizen resident, we have the increase of standard deduction from 1 million in the NIRC to 5 million in the train law. For number two, we have expenses, losses, indebtedness of which covers funeral expenses and judicial expenses now rewarded as claims against the estate while claims against insolvent persons and unpaid mortgages are retained. So with properties previously taxed and transfers for public use also retained in the train law. But for number, for the family home, the 1 million is increased to 10 million in the train law but the medical expenses not exceeding 500 in nirc was deleted in the train law because it's already 5 million in standard deduction but the amount received by heirs under ra 4917 or the retirement benefits of private firm employees is also retained to be a part of the deduction from gross estate. Section 86B is for the allowable deductions of the gross estate of a non-resident alien. Okay, so very different from A, which is a resident or a citizen. So we have the expenses, losses, and indebtedness now itemized in the train law to be standard deduction of 500,000 only in comparison to 5 million of a citizen, resident, Claims against the estate is now itemized here. Claims against the insolvent person and unpaid mortgages. So as you can see, the three items is the same as with the resident and citizen. This is again to simplify the computation. But since this is a non-resident alien, it should be in proportion, still in proportion to the value of the entire gross asset situated in the Philippines. Properties previously taxed and transfers to public use is still also retained under the train law. Section 86 covered for conjugal shares and was kept in the train law, hence retained. Section 86 is a miscellaneous provision for non-residents, which stated that if the executor, administrator, or any one of the heirs failed to produce the amount of the gross estate of properties not situated in the Philippines, they are not allowed any deduction. So that kind of provision was now deleted in the train law. So that means they are now allowed deductions even if we don't know how much they own outside the philippines section 87 and 88 covered exemptions from estate and the value of the estate also ex also skipped in the train law section 89 is a notice of death which was a requirement in the nirc in the train law this was repealed and is not anymore a requirement Section 90A3 was an attachment, a requirement of an attachment of a certified public accountant if the estate was quite a large one. 
In the NIRC, it was 2 million. But now, with the increase of everything else, it is now at 5 million. In Section B, even the time of filing of the estate tax return was extended from 6 months in the NIRC, now at 1 year. In addition to that, we also have the provision of the payment of taxes in Section 91. So, the time of payment, which should be on filing, is retained, as well as the extension of time to pay and the liability for payment. The extension of time to pay already indicated in the NIRC where in two years for extrajudicial or five years if judicial required a bond. The train law provided an additional provision of payment by installment of estate tax still at two years but now without civil penalties, penalties and interest and without the requirement of bond, they are allowed to do installment payments of estate taxes again with the approval of the Bureau. Sections 92, 93, 94, 95, and 96, which cover discharge of the executor from personal liabilities, deficiencies, payment before delivery, duties of certain officers, and restitution of tax upon satisfaction of outstanding obligations, were skipped. Section 97 covers the payment of tax antecedent to the transfer of shares, bonds, and rights. In the NIRC, it was stated that in this section, there shall not be any transferred to the new owner, any properties basically, personal properties, real properties. So in the personal properties are included cash deposits in the bank. Hence the second paragraph wherein if the bank had knowledge of the death of its depositor, whether loan or joint, they shall not allow the withdrawal of the same unless a it is stated in the e-car. No? So, all, all properties should only be transferred to new owners only with a clearance from the BIR, a certification from the BIR. In this case, a certificate authorizing registration. Although it was provided in the NIRC in the beginning, uh, 20,000 to be withdrawn even without certification, it was the same basis on why withdrawal slips contain statements that all depositors should be living at the time of withdrawal. But in the train law, it has now been amended to allow, the banks will now allow the withdrawal of the said deposits, but are subject to a withholding tax of 6%, a final withholding tax at that, which means once the deposits are subjected to this final withholding tax, the receivers will only get 94% of the deposit and the bank will, the bank who withheld the amount of 6% will be remitting the same to the BIR in behalf of the heirs. And being final means the amount with the deposit amount does not have to be included in the estate tax computation for estate tax due. They don't have to be included there. However, the withdrawal of the said deposit can only be done within one year from the date of death. Beyond that, it has to be included in the filing of the estate tax. However, if it is the choice of the heirs not to be subjected to a withholding tax, they must include this account in the application for the estate tax and that so that the same will be included in the list stated in the car or the certificate authorizing registration. So once the bank sees the account number and the account amount in the e-car, they can now release the same without the withholding tax. The heirs can get 100% of the account. So that's it. That was a lot for estate taxes. Now we move on to donors taxes. Donors taxes only covers three slides because not a lot was changed but still very important. So section 99 covers for the rates of donors tax. Donors tax rates in general was from 2% to 15%. If the donor-donor relationship is that of siblings, spouse, ancestors, and lineal descendant or blood relative or consanguinity, a collateral line within the fourth degree of relationship, they are considered relatives. Beyond that, they are strangers and are subject to a rate of 30%. This was because it was encouraged that the donations should be within the family. But in the train law, it is now 6%. Just like in the estate tax. So, it follows the ease in doing business. It's now easier. And the 100,000 exemption is now increased to 250,000. Do note that the exemption of 250,000 is applied 
for a whole year's worth of net gifts for every donor. Donations to political candidates under Section C is retained in the train law. Section 100 are transfers for less than adequate consideration. When there is a sale of a property wherein the fair market value of the property exceeds the amount which was paid for it, the, the difference is deemed a gift, hence subject to donor's tax. In the train law, it is now additionally provided that if the transaction has the three requisites, which is, number one, it is a bona fide transaction, which means it is made in good faith. It is at arm's length, which means it is as if between two unrelated parties. And it is free from donative intent. The transaction is considered to be made is the adequate and full consideration in money or money's worth. Hence, no donor's tax will be impossible as it was not deemed a gift. Section 101 covers the exemption of gifts. So this was mentioned in the documentary stamp taxes. In the train law, Section A1 or, or the donation of properties on the account of marriage or a dowry is now removed. Hence, now subject to donor's tax. What is left will be the gifts by resident citizen, gifts by non-resident citizen, and the gifts are the gifts to government and gifts to institutions specifically stated in the tax law. And that's it. Again, this is Irish JB Villanueva for the report. Thank you.